Michael, we're here in Robert Gleeson's Kennels in Rathangan County, Kildare, as we look forward to this year's Irish Greyhound Derby. What a, a derby it promises to be. And Rob, you've pretty much done a, a lot of it at this stage, so let's have a chat and, and tell us, how did you get into the game whenever it was? Um, I started off with my father. He had three or four dogs. He used to race them in Mullingar and Newbridge. And then I went to college in Knockbeg and uh, in Carlow and went to school with Kevin Hennessy. So I got friendly with Kevin and um, used to go racing during the week on a Thursday night then a Scarty and a Wednesday night in Kilkenny and used to go racing with Paul and Susan and just through college the six years we were there um, got really stuck into dogs and mad about them and uh, came out then and was with the father doing a few dogs and we got a few nice dogs and then I decided he, he just said to me one day he said look be better off putting the license in your name hmm. so that's it just kickstart from there yeah and obviously you're not too far from reggie roberts and reggie roberts is a very close family friend and he's had loads of derby chances over the years reggie is, is in my opinion as good as anyone right as our, um i think he's six derby finalists or whatever but no i use reggie's gallop i can let me do whatever i want to do reggie's a good friend and um i he's he's taught me a lot too yeah. So in 2010, you took out your license. As you said, it was more your dad sort of saying, listen, give it a go. Yeah, he was the one that pushed me to go. And we took out our license. And then we started, I think Larry Dunn gave us two good dogs at the time. And that kicked the ball, you know what I mean? Got things going. Mm. And on, onwards and upwards. Yeah. Now, you didn't have long to wait for your first major finalist because that year, Herr Mack got to a ledger final. He did, yeah. He was second to uh, Farley Turbo. Mm. I think it was the first ledger in Limerick in the new track. And he was a good dog. He was probably three or four lengths short of being the tops. But he, yeah. he every night he ran, he gave it his best. And he won plenty of races in Shelburne for us. And well, he was a good dog. Yeah. Getting to a ledger final so early, did that sort of tell you you'd made the right decision? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we started to, you know, do things, upgrade the kennels and things like that. So we got really stuck into it then. Yeah, obviously 2013 was the year Slippy Robert, and we'll chat about him. But also that year, Aklamon Messi got to a, a puppy derby final in Harold's Cross. He did, yeah. I think he was third. It was only very half a length in the short head. Yeah. They all went over the line together that year. Um, yeah, we bought him over in a Scotty right. for a syndicate in England. And he turned out to be a right dog too. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to Slippy Robert. But the following year, when you had a certain dog, there was an awful lot of talk about this droopy snitch. He was. He was... One that he he never fulfilled his potential right. really. He just thing little things. He was so fast, but little things just kept going wrong with him. Mm. And uh, I think he was the fastest pup ever to win in his debut in Shelburne. Yeah, twenty eight oh nine. Yeah, and uh, it was on a, a Wednesday night. It wasn't mm. a Saturday night, but um, no, he was a machine. He was a freak really. He, the runs he could do was, and he could he the early to go five to five, and he could stay six hundred yards. But uh, no, he got injured in the English Derby. He won the Night of Stars and Willie Hislop won him, another good owner. And uh, he wanted to run him in the English Derby. And he sent him over to Terry Dartland. And he won the first two rounds, but he got injured in the third round, I think it was. He chipped the bone in his wrist. And he came back and we done everything. We sent him to Shane Gearn and down in Cork. And he tried his best, but he, just, <coughs> he was never the, the same dog. So he just retired. But he only ran, I think, 16 races. Yeah, and you mentioned those two early runs, 28.09 debut, he won the following week in 28 seconds, and five runs later, he went off one of the anti-post favourites for the derby, he went in as, as maybe the dog to beat that year. He did, yeah, we ran him, we we ran him in the, he won the champion puppy 550, mm. and he done 29, I think it was 45 or 35, his first time over 550 in Shelburne, but um, no, like he was winning the heats by 9 and 10 lengths, like, mm. against good dogs. So I suppose that's why he went anti-post, you know what I mean, favourite. But then after that, he got a little bit of a virus just before the derby. And he ran a bit sluggish in the first two rounds, but he qualified. And we got his bloods done in the quarter, I think it was the third round, and he was coming up. Every week his bloods were coming up, but he just went out by, I think, a short head in the third round. So it was disappointing that night. But um, no, we got him back then. I think he was a ledger, I think, and yeah. he broke the track record. Mm. But no, he was a very, very fast dog. He was yeah. extremely fast dog. And as you mentioned, the following year, you went to Wimbledon with high hopes, but a bit like the Irish Derby, things just didn't go to plan. 
No, not in my Japan. And I actually read another dog, same group as Latina. Mm. We brought him over. <coughs> and um, he went to the quarterfinals and he was a bit naughty in the quarterfinals. He, he, he should have been in the semifinals, right. but he got things into his head anyway. But uh, no, I just things don't work out, and that's the way it, that's what happens. Yeah. Is Nidge one that maybe got away? He is definitely. Definitely, he was. I thought he was definitely good enough to win a derby anyway. Right. A few years later, you went up to where uh, you went to Limerick, two maker Josie managed to win the Kirby. Must have been a great night. It was. Uh, we bought him off John Flynn, off a trade in Shelburne, Willie Hislop did. And um, he actually, he, he came, Willie gave him to me, and I gave him a few trials. And then he actually he went back over to Scotland and he won a handicap race in his first race in Scotland. And then he came back to me then, and he you know, he won race, a handicap race, and he went straight into the Concarby. Right. So you might as well say he went into the Concarby unraced. Mm. And just every week he got better and better. And thankfully he, he won he won the big one. Yeah. The Kirby's been a massive success and a massive addition to, to Irish Greyhound racing. It is. What I would now, I'd say, be a bit bleak, mm. to be honest with you, because everyone starts buying dogs for their own October, November time. And everything's everyone wants to come Kirby dog. You know what yeah. I mean? They're looking for January, whatever. But uh, no, it's been a great stake. We've been in the final thing four times. So but we always target try to get dogs for the Con Kirby. Yeah. And when you look at it every year's final and you look the following year, it stands up because all those dogs seem to, to hold their own at the top level. Oh they do every year. I think last year we drew Bees Edison in it. I think Ban Lebouled was in it, Kildare was in it, yeah. Sword Rex was in it. Like that speaks for itself. Yeah. Then twenty twenty, Claire I can probably your your best chance maybe since since Slippery Robert of of winning the derby, he got to the twenty twenty final, and the following year, a big eye catcher went when finishing second in the champion stakes. He was. He um he lacked a bit of early, um but he was a pacey dog. I think he was only beaten two and a quarter lengths in the final, out of trouble in the final. Yeah. But um no, he he done well, and we two maker Sydney. He was mm. he was there as well in the semi final, another fast dog. But uh, no, Kalari was a good dog. He um. He paid for himself anyway. Yeah. And we must mention a couple of the females. I suppose Frontomania and Droopy's Curio. I know Curio is close to your heart. Two bitches who were as good as you get. Yeah, Curio was exceptional. From day one, she broke the track record in Newbridge. Um, she was a machine. Yeah. You know I mean, when she broke the track record in Waterford and won the Puppy Oaks and runner up in the Oaks. And she had a short career too. She, she was like, she got injured in Limerick in a trial and she would have been coming back in her second season. So, um, and I think she would have got 550. Mm. But no, the, she was a great bitch. And front of Manny, when she took it in her head to run, she yeah. could run. It's as simple as that. She just, she was, she fell in her first race in Clamel, um, in the unrace stake. And I'd say it knocked her confidence a bit. And she took her four or five races to win. But one night, I think you were commentating your first year she won in 28-11 in Shelburne before the Oaks. Yeah. The penny started to drop with her, but she was, sure she bet Susie Sapphire eight or nine lengths twice, I think. Yeah. So that just tells you. Yeah. And you've obviously some progeny of her, and we'll be chatting about that going forward, but, you know, she's still very much part of the, the Gleason team. Curio, uh, front of Manny, I think, was in, she had pups dice on fire. Yeah. They were only four or five months, but uh, Curio, yeah, we have two out of the first layer, so... We're happy to have them. Yeah, and we skipped over Ballymac Big Mike, another dog with savage pace. Yeah, he was a good dog. Um, uh, he was won the bar one and he sprinted the year. I think he won most all the sprint competitions, but he was a great dog, out like a rocket, and he was a brother of Ballymac Matt actually. But uh, yeah, he was a great dog. Every night you went racing with him, you were always nearly in the first three. You've had some some great nights. You've been very lucky. Obviously, there's been hard luck stories, but. Going down memory lane just shows you the calibre of dog you've had. Very lucky. And we wouldn't have them without the owners. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. We were, we had great owners and lucky they're able to buy dogs. If you see a dog, you you have a chance of you know, having them. But um, no, we're very, very lucky. We, we've had having great dogs.